sir, we're Pont Freed. Can I take your order, please? Welcome to the Gibbons Talks Box and YouTube channel. Uh, please subscribe if you've not done so already. Uh, very pleased to be joined by Guy Lockett. Um, I've asked jo Gary to join me on the show today to speak to me about the upcoming Liam Williams Demetrius Andre fight, which takes place this Saturday uh, from Miami in the USA. Um, for those of you who don't know, which I'm guessing are perhaps uh, American fight fans, um, Gary trained Liam from his, I think, his second or third pro fight, was it, Gary? Yeah, we were together for about seven, seven and a half years. Up until um, Liam's fight with Sharp, or was it, was it the fight after? Yeah, um, Daryl Sharp, I think, was the last fight, and then um, went a uh, different way with his, uh, with, his, with his training then. So, um, yeah, um, seven good years together, and um, British Commonwealth champion. I think the first run from the Ronda Valley, I think, since Tommy Farr, perhaps. I think I'm right in saying that. Which, which is a bit surprising, really, considering you think of the Ronda, Ronda or somewhere that would produce lots of champions, just been a, a tough... Tough area. Yeah, definitely. I think there's, there's been a lot of good fighters come out of the Ronda, but again, in Wales, we're, we're starved of opportunities, aren't we? You know, and um, I think mainly, you know, there's so many, there's so many guys that we have in Wales which are very, very capable of going on and winning major titles, but we're starved of opportunities. Not really a great deal of opportunities in Wales, is there? So, I think when you get one of our Welsh fighters win a major title, like a British Commonwealth or or European maybe world title then they certainly deserve it, that's for sure. And they've, they've probably done it the hard way as well. OK, uh, this Liam Williams against Demetrius Andre fight, there was, it's been talked about for probably the best part of 12 months or probably more than that from when Liam beat uh, Atlantis Fox. Um, what's your initial thoughts on the fight, Gary, when, when it was first uh, announced or first thought of? Well, I think Liam's got a great chance. You know, I think, um, obviously... Andre is, is a big name. He's a two-weight world champion. He's won three three world titles in two different weights. And and obviously Liam's the underdog. Um, but I don't really think that Andre is as good as what the Americans make him out to be. Um, obviously, he's a southpaw. He's he's quite awkward. He's a stiff hitter as well. But what I do notice is he's, he, he seems to get a knockdown early on and then he really, really struggles to finish the guy. So... That's it. That tells me that he isn't really the puncher that that, that, that you know he's supposed to be. Um, and Liam likes Liam likes southpaws. He's always liked southpaws, and I think he's I think he's boxed a fair few in his time, and I think he's stopped them all. So um, I, I just don't see why I just don't see why Liam Liam can't win this. I think the American five fans are just looking straight past Liam, as I think Andre is too. Um, and if that is the case, then I think Liam's got an absolutely brilliant chance of winning. So with that in mind, what, what do you think are the main areas that Liam should be targeting going into the fight? Well, I think, you know, I, I don't think it's a, it's a hard one to call. You know, I think Liam has to get, get inside and, and, and make him fight for, and fight for most of the round, doesn't he? I think he has to get inside and, and, and bust up his rhythm and, and bust him up on the inside. He can't stand off. You know, that's what Andre will want him to do. Um, so, you know, I don't, I don't think Liam's shy in, in adopting those tactics in any fight anyway. You know, it's not a fight where you have to stand off and, and kind of pick the guy off. You know, Andre's going to be trying to do that to Liam. So I think if, if Liam gets inside, educate the pressure and just tries to, you know, and interrupt his rhythm, um, rhythm and, uh, and bust him up on the inside. And something I, I think you touched on briefly in your previous answer. Um, I've listened to quite a few of uh, Demetrius Andre's interviews that he's done for American media recently, and he speaks about Liam Williams for maybe 10, 20 percent of the interview, and then he goes on to who's going to fight after Liam. Yeah, so, do you think he's looking overlooking Liam? A million percent, a million percent. I mean, when we were over in Texas, I mean, the fight was being talked about then, and um, I can remember a friend of mine at Matchroom, Anthony Lever, he said that he'd, bought, he'd spoke to one of the American commentators, um, one of the American journal, the journals. And they say, oh, it's, a, it's an absolutely ridiculous fight for, for Andre. You know, this, the kid Williams has lost to Liam Smith, who's been beaten by Canelo and he's been beaten by Mangua. So I can remember Anthony saying to the guy, look, listen, you know, Liam, all right, he's lost to Liam Smith, but Liam Smith is a world-class fighter. 
you know, uh, Liam Williams is a real deal. And he's like, nah, and he just wasn't convinced. So this is what America is like, you know, they, this is what they think of us Brits and they call us the Europeans. You know, they just don't think any of us can fight. But obviously with, with Liam Williams, you know, they're making a big, big mistake if they think that. And uh, another factor as well is uh, Andre, he's not made the, the middleweight limit since his fight in January 2020. Um, he's a big guy. He, he said on social media, if, if you want to believe him or not, that his weight has been up as far as 200 pounds. Um, yeah. Get, getting back down to the middleweight limit, is that a potential factor or even a worry for uh, Demetrius Andre going into the fight? I wouldn't think it, it'd be a worry because these Americans seem to get away with it. They come in, they come in three, four, five, six pound overweight on purpose sometimes. And um, making the weight wouldn't be a worry. It's just how lazy... Andre has been. I, I don't. I don't really think his motivation has been up to much the last couple of years, and I think that's. I think that's affected his performances as well. I, mean, I, I can remember him fighting um, Brian Rose, um, and then I can remember him fighting um, Jack Kulkai as well. You know, he, look, he looked really, really good in those fights. But uh, the, when he didn't land the bigger fights, then I think his performances have suffered, lack of motivation, um, and you know he, he just doesn't look as go, good as what he used to look. But Hopefully, this lack of motivation will continue for this fight. And, you know, the reason I say that is, you know, Liam, Liam's got a good chance if Andre's at his best. But obviously, if Andre's not at his best, then it gives Liam Williams a much better chance, doesn't it? So, um, but, but whatever happens, you know, like I said at the start of the interview, I think Liam, Liam is going to be a nightmare opponent for, for Andre because a lot of these guys you know, they're a little bit afraid to get involved in case they get caught with big shots, whereas Liam's just going to be in his face all night. That's where I think anyway. Mm. And another thing I've noticed as well, we, we talk about the Americans just dismissing British fighters or Welsh fighters, European fighters. Another thing I think happens the other way is that I've noticed a lot of Liam's fans just dismissing Demetrius Andre as in just, they think Liam is just going to blow him away. And that they, they, a lot of people don't even know how good Andre is. They know nothing about him really. So, they what listen up. I had to look at it on social media, you know, it's just unbelievable. Like calling lots of them, hundreds of them calling Andre a shit house and stuff like that. A weight world champion, you know. I mean, the only reason that he wouldn't talk about Liam Williams is probably because he hasn't he hasn't heard of him. And and obviously I'm not being disrespectful when I say that. It's just because Liam's over in Britain and the Americans haven't heard of him because he hasn't beaten a, a name. Um so you know, that's the only reason that Andre wouldn't, you know want to fight Liam, I think, because he obviously wants the, the marquee fights, the bigger fights. And um, But listen, I think he's going to know all about him Saturday night after the fight, win, lose or draw, put it that way. So what, what are his main strengths, Gary, from what, what you've watched of him? Uh, Andre? Yeah. Well, he's got that southpaw style. He's got good feet, um, good jab. He can punch a little bit. And he just seems to have that natural awkwardness that most southpaws have got. Doesn't really take a lot of shots. Um, but he, you know, he has been dropped a couple of times. The once, um, I think, the once he was off balance, um, and then, but then Matrosian, I think, uh, Ham Hamet Matrosian, I think, he dropped him as well with a, uh, with a, with a, with a right hand cross. So, all the, you know, I don't think uh, Petro, it is Ham Hamet Petrosian, I think his name is. I don't think he's the fighter that Liam is. So, you know, that gives um, that gives us a little bit of hope as well that um, that he can be hit and hurt. And something you've touched on already as well, um, Demetrius Andre, he often starts off very well, very fast. He throws lots of combinations, especially um, a big loop in overhand left, left. Yeah. But he, he seems to take his foot off the gas as the fight goes on. I don't, Whether... know if he does, I don't know if he does take his foot off the gas. I think he, once he drops the guy, he starts thinking he's a puncher and he starts loading up and, and, and forecasting his shots and, I think if he just carried on boxing, using the jab and, and, and looking to land the, 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 the shot um, patiently rather than rushing in, he would have finished him a lot lot sooner. But, I mean, if you look at his last fight against um, Luke Keeler, you know, um, no disrespect to Luke Keeler, but I think Liam would stop Luke Keeler very early on, whereas he took Andre like nine rounds, I think it was, wasn't it? So, I mean... When you look at it in those terms, I think Liam is, is the bigger puncher out of the two. Andre probably the, the more technical fighter. But 
I just don't, I just don't, I think it's Liam's best opportunity that he can have to win a world title. You know, I think if you look at the guys that he could be boxing for a title, like your Charlos and your GGGs and your Canelos, guys like that, I, you know, putting him against a guy like Andre is, is, is brilliant for him because I think he's got a massive chance and, um, you know, don't, I don't listen to this. Andre's avoided, you know, the Charlos have avoided him and all the big names avoided. I think the only reason that he's been avoided is because he doesn't really sell. Um, you know, he has got quite a boring style at, at times and and he just doesn't sell for the TV. And I think that's why those those big fights haven't happened for him. And you're saying that, that he doesn't sell. It's interesting that they're, they're the only mutual opponent they've got, Atlantis Fox. Um, I think it was after that fight, which I think was a 12-round points, points win for Demetrius Andre. I think it was HBO actually dropped him uh, off, off their roster because, like you said, it wasn't a particularly exciting fight. Whereas when Liam boxed Fox, he, he stopped him. I think it was in four or five rounds. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you, you look you look at Atlantis Fox, and and to be honest, you know, listen, Liam went through him like a hot knife through butter, didn't he? But I mean, if you look at him, he, he wasn't really what you'd call a world class opponent. And um, of even obviously, he had the rating, and he boxed Andre for a world title. And even though he dropped Andre, I think Andre was off balance. I think Andre won almost every round anyway. Um, so. To not impress against an opponent like that, no wonder he got dropped off HBO's roster. Um, but having said that, he can look, even though he looked boring in that fight, he can look very good as well when he applies himself. So I think it goes back to what I was saying, whereas you know, he's, there's a lack of motivation with the fights that he's having at the moment because he wants the Charlos, the GGGs, the Canelos. Um, and I think because he's fighting guys who he considers to be less than him, I think there's a lack of motivation. And, and obviously that's that's contributed to his, his performances as well. How much of a step up in class is this for Liam, do you think, Gary, between the level he's been boxing at to yeah. uh, where look, Andre is? Look, you know, he, it's, it's a big step up. Um, but Liam is a world-class fighter, you know, but... We need to see now, you know, obviously after the Liam Smith fights, I mean, the, the, the first Smith fight, he won in my eyes. Um, the second Smith fight, Smith just changed tactics. He boxed, he boxed a lot more rather than just bullying forward. He boxed really well. Liam hurt his hands as well. I think he hurt his hand in the fifth and then he hurt his, his left hand then in the tenth as well. Ended up, you know, narrowly missing on, out on that fight. So he is a world-class fighter. My worry is that he hasn't fought anybody world-class since Liam Smith. So, you know, he's had a lot of big wins, which have got people talking, you know, a lot of knockouts. But, you know, I don't think he's fought anyone of Liam Smith's level since that second fight. Having said that, um, I don't think it's going to make a difference on Saturday night. I just think that Liam's got, you know, I spoke to him briefly last weekend and he said that, you know, I won't say what he said, but he's, he's ready ready to go through helper that way. And um, you know, he said he's in great shape. He's really, really confident. And um, you know, it, it just it just smacked of a guy who really believes that he's going to win. No, you know, no matter what. Yeah, there's something about Liam's body language. He just seems so confident and just so he's almost the opposite of Andre's body language. Who seems very uh, nonchalant about the whole it's, thing and almost d- d- dismissing the fight. Yeah, he is very disinterested. But as I say, that goes back to that lack of motivation. And, you know, that when you're fighting a guy who's as hungry and as confident as what Liam Williams is, that doesn't, it doesn't bode good for him. So, you know, obviously we want Liam to win at, at all costs. But isn't it great when you see the attitude of an Andrade who, you know, is it an act? Is he, is he really underestimating him or does he know that he's in a fight? I'd, I'd imagine it's, it's the former because he's been like it now for I don't know how long, um, you know, dismissing opponents and, and not being up for opponents. Hence why you said being cut from HBO. So I think all of it, all of those factors put together, you know, we could have another Welsh world champion. And uh, probably the toughest question of all, Gary, how do you think the fight's actually going to go when, uh, we, when we hear the first bell on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, I really, I really wouldn't know how the fight's going to go. I think, I think, I, I think we can probably be um, be confident in picking the fact that Liam isn't going to stand off. Uh, he's going to, he's, he's not going to. I think he's going to, you know, he's going to pressure him. You know, educated pressure, and uh, and like I said, I think he's just going to try and you know bust, you know, break him, break him down in stages and bust him up. Um, 
and hopefully you know hopefully he can he can he can do that um he's just he's a he's a big puncher Liam you know but he's also very very accurate with those straight arrows that he's got um and he throws very unusual punches as well I mean you know there's not a lot of people would have picked up on this it's quite a it's, it's, it's very if you pull Liam's head down or when Liam goes low he's able to angle shots up over the top he must have very very um flexible shoulders and rotate <laughs> You go back in years. He boxed a guy called um, uh, a guy called Tony Randall. Now it was on the undercard of um, Freddie Flintoff's pro fight, um, and this guy, you know, he's he either beats beats good prospects or he gets, you know, or he, you know, that sounded stupid. That he either beats them or he gets beat himself. But he's put it this way: Tony Randall was he was he's kind of a danger man at, at times, and he's be, beaten a, a lot of uh, you know unbeaten prospects, but. Liam blazed out. I think he'd been put up behind Flint off on the bill. He was really pissed off, so to say. He steamed out of the corner, put the fear of God into uh, Randall. And Randall's pulled his head down and he's hit him with right up over the top. And then a left hook and knocked him, knocked him spark out. He did the same with Paul Morby in one of his early fights up in the Ronda Leisure Centre. Um, did the same with Gary Corcoran. So it's almost like when his head goes low, he's able to throw these shots over the top. And um, as I said, I, I really don't know how he does it because his, his shoulders are not really, really flexible, but he catches a lot of people out with that shot. And, um, you know, I don't think it'll be any different on um, on Saturday when he, when he fights um, Andre, who's, who's a good bit taller than him. So, um, you know, something just to keep in mind. Um, he's he's going to be in his face for 12 rounds, that's what I believe. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, if it lasts that long, let's be fair, uh, hopefully he comes out the victor. One key area, which, um, if you're going to be negative about Liam, is, is sometimes he appears to lose his head momentarily. I know a couple of times when you were training him, you had to read the riot act, so to speak, and get him back on track. I know um, Dominic Ingle's done it a few times as well. Uh, could that be a factor in, in, in this fight, probably the toughest fight of his career? Um, it could be. You know, it could be. Um, but only Liam knows how to, to control that. Um you know, he he lost his head, I think, in, you know, in the Gary Corcoran fight quite a lot. And it ended up being one of his worst performances. And, you know, I said to him before the fight, I said, you have to keep your cool. If you keep your cool, you'll stop this guy in two or three rounds. Didn't keep his cool and ended up going 11. I mean, he got the stop, was in the 11th round. But, you know, I think I think it taught him a lesson. He didn't really lose his head too much after that. Um, but I, th I think if Leon can... I think Liam, he likes to take it personal when he's fighting someone. He likes to get it in his head that he wants he re wants to really hurt the guy. But I think sometimes that can that can play against you, can't it? You know, it can go against you. But um, I think if he keeps a calm head, um, I think he's like I keep saying. I think he's got a really good chance of winning. Okay, uh, so that fight is on Saturday night on the the Zone app for British boxing fans. I think Liam has said uh, he's expecting it to start between 11 and uh, 12 o'clock in the night, yeah. so uh, tune in for that one. Hello, Sir, so we're Pontefreed. Can I take your order, please? 